people would be equal in his sight. Further, we discuss that man is not the origin of truth and morals. Understand that some of the events of the maybe most recent 10 years, murders, deception, pride, greed, and increasing worship of false gods, people, money, etc. Sexual promiscuity, oppression of others, and authoritarianism and corruption in some of the highest places could perhaps be in part because of this difficulty to accept that all people are created equal, all with the same rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness as is stated in the United States. When you diminish God with inappropriate perceptions about him or that he exists at all, it makes it easier to do whatever feels good because you don't have to be accountable. If you erase, eradicate, eliminate, cause people to doubt that there is a God, then they are certainly more willing to do certain actions, say certain things, uh, because there's no reason to have any accountability. You know, uh, often people talk about how uh, will you do things in the sight of people the same way that you would do it if you believe there's no one watching. Many people under the guise of anonymity will do things because they don't believe anyone in the immediate uh, area will recognize who they are. I mean, don't we acknowledge that most thieves present themselves covered in a mask, uh, gloves on, uh, plain black clothing, gray clothing, just, you know, want to blend in type clothing. When they go into that 7-Eleven or that bank, they cover their faces. Anonymity. They believe they can get away with it because they won't be recognized. The only problem with that is, as we discussed earlier, God is omnipresent. He is everywhere. Scripture even says that if you are lowered into hell, there he would also be with you. If you reach the highest pinnacles of mountains, he is there also. As far as the east is from the west, God is there. So you can begin to see that Man's thinking is limited and inadequate to try to understand who, what, and where God is. His feelings are also inadequate to understand because they are so unpredictable and changing. It is said many times that people are fickle. One day they're On this side of an issue, the next day, they're on the other. 
We have evidence of this every day. You can see people who will follow the fashions from one minute to the next. A certain fashion is acceptable. Then it becomes unacceptable. Certain actions are appreciated and predominate the society's thinking and behavior. And then the very next moment, those things are no longer in fashion. Unpredictable feelings. It is even more inappropriate for man to use his or her own experiences. As we discuss, man's experiences not only are limited to space and time, but even the experiences we have within the years that we live are severely limited. Most people, in fact, a lot of people, haven't even left the states in which they were born. Some people haven't even left the cities in which they were born. Some people don't go outside of the United States. Even in the advent of the internet, all the documentaries that are available on other cultures, communities, um, countries, a lot of people don't avail themselves to those types of experiences. So our experiences are extremely limited. And we discussed some of that before. So I want to focus today on the feelings. Most people only want to do what feels good or comfortable. And the erroneous part of that is that they believe that, you know, if I have a good feeling, if I'm feeling comfortable about this particular place or idea that I'm entertaining, then that's a good thing. I have a good feeling about this. You've heard some predominant leaders in our society say they have good feelings and this is what they're basing their truth on. Those good feelings. Well, what if later you have a tummy ache and now you have a bad feeling? Does that then make the thing that you were thinking untrue? It is not good to base or to measure truths, justice, morals, or even beauty on feelings, emotions. Have you ever noticed that if you're watching the news or TV, perhaps you're listening to the radio, and in one moment you are hearing or watching something that is horribly tragic, I mean, just the most horrible thing you can imagine. And then, within moments, you might be finding yourself laughing. Have you ever noticed that? Sometimes, it's almost within the same paragraph or sentence that is spoken. A program will go from uproarious laughter to some somber moment. Movies often do the same thing. Is that healthy? And what I mean is 
do we adequately take the time to immerse ourselves in those feelings, those emotions, which some people claim to be so terribly important, upon which they base their moral behavior, their truth, their decisions, justice, and beauty. In fact, we can look at recent events and the many different protests on based on this very same fallacy that the feelings are an determination of justice. A few short years ago, there were certain things in America that were unlawful. Today, they're lawful. Feelings, thinking, many things that were lawful several years ago are unlawful now. If we allow man and his impredictability, his ever-changing concept of what is moral, just, beautiful, or truthful, then we can certainly understand how with every change of the wind, our society has been thrown to and fro. One day it's up, next day it's down, the sky is blue. No, wait a minute, it might be purple. The earth is flat, no, it's round. And then, oh, no, no, there are some people that still believe it's flat. It is this unpredictability. It is this ever-changing, ever-evolving thought of what is truthful, justice, moral, and beautiful that causes so much frustration, so much condemnation, so much oppression because we are constantly relying on our own feelings and emotions rather than using the true moral compass of our Father God. The book of Ecclesiastes also teaches us that because we are finite, that is limited in our experiences, limited in our perceptions, limited in our intelligence. We cannot know good from evil. We cannot know truth from error. Everything becomes vanity and empty. The book of Ecclesiastes teaches this almost within every scripture. Saying that man is all self-sufficient. Who needs God for grace? Who needs God for revelation? Who needs God to save them? I've often heard people say, Especially if I've asked them, are you saved? There, there's some people who, saved from what, they will say. Saved from whom? Oftentimes my response is, saved from yourself. Everyone being totally honest would acknowledge that many of the problems or situations that they find themselves in 
is often because 